Celtic Appalachian belief says that the curves in the mountains we see are formed by the backs of sleeping dragons. Today on the art workshop, we're waking one up. Hello and welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. We appreciate you tuning in today. We also appreciate PAC TV and theholler.org for producing the show and bringing it to you. Um, we want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the opening. I know I mentioned a Celtic lore, which is a true Celtic lore. Dr. Jeff Hawkins at the Kentucky Valley Educational Co-op actually brought this to my attention. I did not know about this, so I think I, you know, I want to share it with you too, okay? Um, as you know, a lot of Scots-Irish um, ancestry make up the mountains in eastern Kentucky. A lot of us who can trace our genealogy back a couple generations um, did come from you know, the Scots-Irish uh, um, Celtic um, um, background. And, and so one of the legends that was carried over, and there's many, many groups that make up eastern Kentucky. I'm not saying that the Scots-Irish are the only ones, but... But in this episode, we are talking about one of the beliefs or superstitions, you might say, or just a lore uh, that was carried over um, from Ireland and Scotland uh, dealing with the mountains. Um, a lot of the beliefs said that the curves that you see, the rolling hills, if you stand on an overlook and you can see um, over a vast distance across our region, you see how the mountains form these humps and ripples and things. Well. The Celtic lore believed that those humps and those ridges, some of them were formed by the backs of sleeping dragons. Um, a lot of us have heard the old um, metaphor or analogy of um, let a sleeping dragon lie or let a sleeping dog lie or something. So, so that, this analogy of that there's something forming our mountains and, and, and we don't want to disrupt it because we sure don't want it waking up. And today we are going to wake one up in a sense because we're going to draw a dragon. And this workshop is about drawing. Um, we, we, in, we incorporate basic drawing skills and we show you how to construct a, a drawing using certain shapes and, and certain um, lines to form our drawing. Uh, a lot of us start from the beginning when they look at a, someone looks at a drawing, uh, uh, they say, how in the world am I supposed to do that? But, but we could do it here. I work with a lot of students and this is what we incorporate in the classroom. Um, so please at home, uh, grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil, have an eraser ready, and even an ink pen if you want, and follow along with me. If you do follow along with me and you create something and you want to share it, that is so amazing. We'd love to see it. What you have to do, you have to go to the holler.org. Once you get there, you register. It takes a few seconds. Register and go into the art workshop holler. It's on the website. Once you're there, you're going to see some options at the top of the screen, and one of those says documents. You click on that. Um, if you know how to send an attachment an email, you can upload your image to the holler.org. And once you do, we'll share it right here behind me on the screen on one of the episodes. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And let's go ahead now and uh, look at what we have to work with today. I told you to grab a piece of paper. Of course, we have that. Mine might be a little larger than yours, but that's okay. Uh, I need that larger paper so you can see what I'm doing, okay? I have a mechanical pencil here. It's a basic mechanical pencil. It's one that you can uh, uh, purchase at any local hobby uh, store or arts and crafts store. Um, this is a 0.7 lead. That means that the lead size is a 0.7. Um, if you don't have a mechanical pencil, it doesn't matter. Uh, number two pencil uh, is great. I have an eraser here too because mechanical pencils don't come with erasers. Um, so I have a little uh, stick eraser that I use. And then also the sharpener I have for another pencil that we may be using. Uh, we, we covered this type of pencil in a later episode using blue ink. Um, so check that one out in the uh, archives if you want to see it and, and learn about what that, what that is and what that means, okay? So we're drawing a character today. I promise we're drawing a dragon, and we are drawing a dragon. We're going to draw Mushu from Mulan. Uh, this is a Disney character. Now, Disney characters are very elaborate. They have these very swirly lines and nice curves and things. So when I make a mark on my paper, you make a mark on yours. So, so if I draw a circle here, you draw a circle. If I make a line coming down, you do the same thing. Now, here's the thing. Here's the key you have to pay attention to. When you, when you press down on your paper, and I'll flip it over and show you, don't press down really hard, okay? You want to make soft lines, soft lines. So you can barely see this line, right? Because what's going to happen is when we make these shapes, drawing Mushu, you're going to go back and actually erase some of those lines, okay? We're not going to use every line that we create. So the first thing we're going to do, though, in order to create this character, you're going to draw a circle, and you're going to draw a circle right here on your paper. 
Okay, notice, now I might press down a little harder than you. The only reason I'm doing that though is for you to see it at home. If I was doing this at, you know, in my shop or something, I'd barely press down on that. Now once we have this circle here, we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna draw another shape. Now this shape looks like, almost like a big turnip. Okay, it's gonna come down and back up. It's like this, right? Gonna draw your big, or an egg even. It looks like an egg a little bit. Now, believe it or not, these two shapes are eventually gonna make up Mulan's head. And we're only gonna draw him from his, uh, above his waist up today. Um, but we're gonna work together to do this. So the next shape we're gonna do is you're gonna start up here at your circle and you're gonna come down. You're gonna come down with your line like this and you're gonna stop about right there, okay? This is a curved line. I drew one right here, I didn't mean to. We'll get rid of that guy. There we go. All right. Once we have this shape then, we're gonna come back up on this side and we're gonna go up into this line. Now notice how these two lines start to get closer together as we go up, see that? Um, it kinda looks like a road even, like you're driving down this road, we have a circle and the egg shape, okay? All of these things combined will eventually make up the character. Right here on the side, you're gonna draw an oval now when Disney artists draw, and Marvel artists too, they use this method a lot. It's called the circle method, or it's also called the Marvel method. If you've ever been in a hobby store, an arts and crafts store, and keep following along with me too, so I drew another oval there. You might notice um, these little wooden characters, these little wooden figures that bend. Well, you can position those in certain ways, right? You can make its arms go up, its legs stick out. That's what we're doing. We're using, basically from our mind, we're drawing, um, um, one of those God, God figure pretty much, a blueprint to work with, okay? So now we have a circle, we have three ovals, and we have this shape going up into the head. We have another arm that we need to make and some hands, but we're holding off on that till the end. I'll tell you why in a little bit. But first now, what I want you to do is go back up here to your circle, okay? Um, we're going to add some eyes inside here, and these are giant ovals, okay? They're large. They're very large. Um, you're gonna go ahead and add an oval here at the top, just like this, okay? Then you're gonna add another oval here. Now notice how this second oval is behind the first oval. I didn't draw the line that intersects with it. I just drew pretty much half of it. Now these will make up uh, Mushu's eyes, okay? Now you're going to come in between the eyes. You see how this line comes down in between, in between your ovals. This one making up the second oval. You're going to follow that line. And you're going to go down with it, just like this, down. All right, you're going to stop about right there. Once you get right here, you're going to draw his nose. Now this shape that we created helped guides us. We, don't have to, we do not have to follow all these lines. It's just there to help guide us, okay? Now his nose is, is, is an interesting shape, really. Um, it's gonna come down like this on this side, okay? It comes up to a point, then down on this side like this, okay? So it goes up, then down, all right? And then you're gonna seal it off like this, okay? There you go. It almost looks like a Hershey kiss, but not, right? And over here, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna put a line coming up, down, in. This is the nose. Over here on this side, you're gonna do the same thing, but watch this one. This one's a little different because you can, you can barely see it because how Mushu's uh, nose is positioned. So now we're going to work on the mouth part leading up to the face. You're going to come over to the edge of the nose right here and what you're going to do is you're going to start making these lines and it's like he has a mustache a little bit so you draw these little jagged shapes coming out like this okay and you keep going with it all the way around like this okay. Now there's no set way on how you draw these or how many there are or anything. Just put a few jagged lines underneath the nose and then bring it all the way around like that, okay? Now once you have this, it helps to guide you to where the mouth's gonna be. And the mouth is actually gonna run up like this right here and it's going to be smiling, right? So it's up like this, okay? Now this line, it's hard to really tell you what kind of line that is, but you can follow along with me and see uh, where it goes and where it leads. And then he has, of course, the line up here making up the smile. So now let's go ahead and work on the teeth part. You're gonna come back down to the nose and you're gonna draw a line coming down like this, okay? 
All right, and once you have this line coming down, you're going to follow the, the, the way this is shaped here. You're going to follow that with another line. So you're going to come, you're going to come down, up. See how I'm following it? One thing about it that you want to get closer together as you go up. You're getting closer together to that other line as you go up. Just like that. See that? See how I started here? And I'm curving it up. And I'm getting closer and closer and closer together to that line until they touch. Right? That's what you want to do. Coming back down here again. This makes up his teeth. Okay? And we'll go ahead and add some lines in there so you know exactly what they are. Their teeth. And Mushan has some, Mushu, I'm sorry, has some pretty sharp teeth, so we'll draw those in there. You know, the dragon lore, I, I've heard something similar to that a long time ago, but it is so interesting when we, when we start to look at the, our heritage here and the types of beliefs that, that our, uh, for our ancestors actually had about the area. Um, so now we're going to make a line coming out here. Make, it's going to be his bottom lip, okay? This line comes out like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it down like this right here. And you're going to bring it up. So it just curves up like that, okay? And you're going to stop. Now you need to draw his chin, right? He's a dragon. He's got a huge, huge snout and mouth. So we're going to come down with, with this shape like this. And then we're going to start, after we come down so far, we're going to go back up. And we're going to start following this line up, up, closer, closer together until you get about right here and stop okay so see what I've done I've drawn one two three of these shapes but I've drawn them in different places so that it makes up the entire mouth okay you break this down into simple shapes every drawing that you want to draw remain simple remember he has a little bit of a of a curve here in his nose that I'll add and you don't have to do this but I'm going to uh, it's just a small shape right there on his nose okay now let's go ahead and add his eyes in here, and we'll do this at the bottom. You'll draw two circles, one here and another right here. Just like that, okay? Um, you could, those of you who like manga or manga or however you want to say it, um, you know, you, your eyes have these light reflection in it, okay? And what I mean by that is, um, is that when you're drawing an eyeball, I'll just draw a little bit up here and show you. So you have a, the eye coming down like this, and then you have, of course, this makes up the other part. Now, this is a cartoon eye. It's not a realistic eye, right? So this, this is the formation of the eye, and then for manga, you draw the circle in there. And, of course, then you draw these light reflections, right, coming off the eye. And so these things make up where, where the uh, light is in the drawing, right? And then you would color all this part in. Now, that little white thing that you see inside of the pupil, that makes up um, where the light is, the reflection of light, okay? So that's something to always remember when you're drawing. And a lot of cartoonists will use that in their work. So there is a little one, little circle inside these black circles here that makes up his eye. Let's go up here to the top now to where his, his eyes are. And you're going to draw these two humps coming up and then down, then up, and then down, okay? Following um, the eye. Okay, that's all we're doing. Up, down, up, down. There we go. Now we're going to work on the top. He has a couple little horns sticking up here. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add a, a line coming up like that. Okay, just one line. And then you curve it and bring it down just a little bit. Okay, and you stop. And you're going to draw another little hump here. Comes up and down. See that? I know I'm moving a little fast. You're probably like, slow down. But you can follow me because we're drawing another one just like it. Come up with a line like this, stop, okay? Round it off, bring it down, up, and then down, okay? This makes up the character's horns, and we have that taken care of now, okay? And then we're going to work on the side of his cheek here before we go down into the body. Before we do that, though, there's one element of Mushu we have to remember. He has um, a, these two, I think, it's a, I think this is his beard. He comes out like this right here, and up, okay? And you'll see what this is in a second. I know you're probably like, what in the world is that? But you'll see how it works here in a second. So you can see how I um, have to erase this little part here in between where his teeth are. There you go. You can see how that works now, right? On the line right here. There we go. All right. And he's got another one just like it on the other side. This side goes up and out like this. You want to put those in there because that's a distinct feature of this character. Okay. 
these two bearded lines. All right, we're working on the side of his cheek now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add these little spikes that come up, out, and down, back in. Once you have that, we'll do his ear. How we do his ear is pretty simple. You're just going to draw a line coming straight up, stopping about right there. Okay, then you're going to draw another line that's going to come up like this and in to that line. And then you're going to draw another line that goes up like this, and then there's a dip, and then it rounds off. Okay, so that's one, one of his ears. This part's colored in black, I think. Then you're going to have another line that comes up like this, stops, down like this right here, and in. And this makes up his other ear. All right? For his cheeks, his cheeks are really simple too. We have this part that comes out like this, and then on the other side, you want to be sure and do the same thing so that he's complete. Okay? Now let's work on his body. His body, you're going to follow this road shape. Remember the road we talked about? You're going to follow that down to right here to your oval and stop. And you're going to do the same thing on this one. You're going to follow this down, 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 and stop. Okay? Once you have that, you're going to come up here and draw another line that goes in, down, 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 down to here. And you're going to stop. Okay? This is where you could put the lines that make up his belly. Okay? And there's a few of them. And you can draw those in like that. Right? He's got a couple of these little waves on his back. I call them waves, but they're no doubt little, probably little spikes or things or whatever they are. But anyway, they go down his back. These are all colored in, okay? Mushu is a character from Mulan, a Disney movie like we were, we were talking about earlier. And um, he's an interesting character. And I thought it'd be a good character for us to draw out of respect to the old Celtic legend of uh, the mountains being made up of dragons. Let's go ahead and work on his, his arms now. Now his arm is going to come down and up. See how we've created the uh, two ovals? This is a framework. If you've watched this, episode, this show you know, quite a bit, you know that we talk about this a lot. Draw the frame first and then draw over top of it, like clay. Um, you would build it from the ground up, okay? You're going to follow this line. You don't always stick these lines, though, like we said earlier. Down, back in, right? And then up, okay? This makes up his arm, one arm. We do the same right here, except we don't come up here and do it. We start down here, and we come down to this oval, stop, and then bring this up all the way like this. That formed one arm, right? Okay, now this is really important for his hand. This is where it's going to get a little bit, it's difficult already, but this is going to get a little, a little hairy, as they say. All right? Um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to draw a line that comes down like this, okay? One line, okay, from this line down. Then you're going to curve it up like this and stop, okay? He's holding something in his hand is what he's doing, okay, in the palm of his hand. So we're going to come back in with it like this and stop. That's his thumb, okay? The next thing we're going to do, or his, his little finger, I'm sorry. The next thing we're going to do, this shape, see this shape? It looks like a boat, right? It comes down, this whole shape right here. You're going to make another one right here, just like it. Now you know what it looks like now because you've already drawn it once, okay? So you should be okay with that, like that, okay? Just like that. The tips of his claws are black, all right? Then you're going to draw one more right here, just like this, all right? And we're going to stop. And the reason we're going to stop is he's holding something. I don't remember the little cricket's name in the movie, but um, he's holding the cricket in his hand. Now, for the cricket, there's a lot of detail in it, and we don't want to take a whole, whole lot of time drawing the uh, cricket, too. We're focusing on Mushu today. And uh, so in order to do this, though, we're going to have to first draw a shape. Honest to goodness, it looks like a heart. If you can draw a heart. I know everybody's drawn a heart before. Some, some way, some form or fashion, you've drawn a heart. Even if you don't want to admit it, you've drawn a heart. So draw a heart, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a little circle, or an oval, excuse me, an oval right there, see? And then an oval right here, okay? This one's slanted a little bit. And this little cricket guy doesn't like being touched on his head by the dragon. That's what the dragon's doing. So we're going to draw two little eyeballs in there. It's kind of hard to see, I know, from, from home. That's why I'm kind of going to go through this a little fast, okay? Because we're focusing on, again, Mushu. Little cricket doesn't like being touched by the dragon. And so he's got a little face on him that says, Hey, buddy, leave me alone. But, of course, Mushu isn't, right? 
Now we're going to work on this hand. Now this hand is touching his head, uh, the little cricket's head. Okay, and what what happens is is he's got he's got his finger um, touching the little cricket's head. So how we're going to do this is you're going to come right here to the top of the head and go to the line that comes up like this and you're going to stop. See that? The line goes up and stops. Then you're going to watch this. Take it down and stop right there. Okay? What's going to happen is you're going to come back to this point. So you made an L. Take that L and you're going to draw this line that comes in like this. See? So it comes down, in, and makes up. It makes up one of his fingers. See that? So he's doing this right here to the uh, to the little cricket. Now you can add a few more of his fingers in here now since you have the first one and just draw these little lines coming down represent his fingers. Another one right here. All right, This one's folded back a little bit. It's his last finger so we can see a little bit of that one. See? This is colored in of course. And then the hand comes down like this. Now this hand is actually bent back like this has the elbow down and up. This has the elbow down and up stops here and goes back up to his body okay you can see a little bit of the shoulder here's a shoulder see a little bit of the shoulder here just like that okay see how that works so he's touching the little cricket um, this is a little bit of a complex drawing sure but Disney is really popular and to see how Disney artists put together their drawings such as this I think it's important now be sure and seal off this uh, hand over here so you have the complete drawing here at the end. See that? Okay. So now we have the, the drawing pretty much um, penciled out. I think we've covered everything on Mushu. Um, the legends of dragons and what dragons represent um, across um, cultures is, is really amazing stuff. And ever since um, Jeff Hawkins told me about this legend, um, I've looked into it a little bit and it's, it's, really, it's really amazing. So if you have time to ever look into some of the beliefs and legends of Appalachia, do that. Research it. Um, there's such as one legend I know of is that on Christmas Eve, if you're, if you're a young girl of, around a marrying age, if you go out to the pig pen on a Christmas, uh, not Christmas Eve, on New Year's, sorry, on uh, New Year's Eve at midnight on, on 31st of de December, and you... Um, you, you, you go to the pig pen, and whichever, if, if an old pig grunts at you, you're going to marry an, a, a miserable person. And if a young pig grunts at you, you're going to be happy with your marriage. So that's a belief. That's more of a superstition. The, the dragon myth is a lore, okay? That's way different. Lores go back generations and generations, and it's embedded within the culture. So it's not something that warns you of anything or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's more of a... Um, um, a belief or, or, or a lore, okay? I think I'm describing that right. If not, send a letter in and let me know and I'll read it, okay? Um, if you do want to communicate with me, you can. Um, log on again to theholler.org, search for the art workshop holler, and you can communicate. If you have any types of, um, let's say you have a suggestion for a um, what you'd like to draw, maybe, maybe a focus. What would you like us to focus on on an episode? Is there anything about Eastern Kentucky and Pike County and our region that you'd like for us to um, draw about? And we'll do that. We'll, we'll take your suggestions and we'll, we'll do an episode. If they're, you know, not all suggestions probably. I'm sure there's some out there we'll probably not, I can't take. But if you have something that makes sense, it's sound, it's reasonable, it's of good taste, um, and it's something that could educate the community, or, or not even, you know, maybe even just inform or insights, those types of things, okay? Uh, we'd love to have those. Any suggestions you have, so log on to the holler.org. That's T H E O, let me spell it T H E H O L L E R dot O R G, okay? The holler.org. And then look for the art workshop holler. And that's how you'll communicate with me, okay? Um, you can also send me an email if you want. Um, it's epplingillustrations at gmail.com if you want to do that. I, I'd love to see some of the work you all have done at home. I know it's probably really cool. Um, what we're going to do now, though, we're actually going to ink Mushu. We're going to take this drawing and we're going to uh, add some ink to it. Okay? And this is the part where really the drawing comes alive, really. Okay? Um, you have uh, an opportunity here uh, to basically you trace over your own lines okay so all these lines that you've made you're going to trace over top of them now I'm using this brush pen uh, it's another pen you can get at a, at a craft store I recommend um, 
just starting out with a regular pin. You don't need anything. This isn't really super fancy, this pin I have, but it's, you know, it does, it is a little more than a, like a ballpoint pin, of course. Um, but before you go and buy a bunch of materials and things, or uh, don't feel bad that you can't go buy a bunch of materials and things, because you really don't need it. You need a, you know, a pen, a pencil, a racer, and a piece of paper. That's what I started out with. And let me tell you something, that's all you need, okay? And you can create stuff with that. Um, a lot of cartoonists, and I've told this, I don't know how many times I've probably said this on the show, but I'll say it again because it's important to know, okay? Um, artists, like from Marvel, Disney, uh, whatever you want to, Pixar, when they create their characters uh, in storyboard, they, they pencil it like we're doing now, right? They pencil it. Um, then they go back and they trace over it like we're doing right now with their brush, okay? And then once they trace over it then, they let this ink dry completely, okay? So that there's no smudging when they erase all the pencil lines. So I hope you, ca I hope you caught that, what I said. They, 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 they pencil it first, right? They ink it second. They let the ink dry and then they erase all the lines. So what happens is, when you look at their drawings, you're like, man, how in the world did she or he or whoever um, just sit down and, and, and just draw that with a pen? Well, there's a, there's a very good chance that they didn't. They, they penciled it first, okay? Now, if let's say you create a character. Uh, there's one character that I have from my stories. His name's Bill um, from the Hillbilly Bigfoot Survival Guide series. And I can draw him like, you know, without penciling. Um, I can draw him with ink because I've drawn him so many times. So unless you've drawn a character a lot and you know what the character looks like, um, you know, you, you probably want to start off penciling. I mean, uh, yep, um, penciling first. So we're inking this character. I could, I could have took my time on this and really, really put some shadow in and some more details. But we have, you know, we don't have a lot of time on the show. We have a lot of time, but we don't have all day. Um, so what we want to do is just go ahead and kind of go over this to give you the idea um, at home what we're doing, okay? So hopefully you can follow along pretty good, all right? The little cricket has those little, um, I think they're antennas at the tops of its head. That's what I just drew on there. And see, the cool thing about doing this method is that once you go back and you start adding more detail, you don't have to follow your own lines. There's no, there's no rule to that. You can add, take away, um, whatever you want to do. Let's say you, you didn't um, put a certain line a certain way like you like it. Well, you can fix it whenever you go to ink it. Okay? We're about done with the inking process. We've got one more, two more little lines here to draw. We need to ink over, and then we're done. And then what we'll do is I'll show it to you and um, maybe erase these lines so you can see. So there's, there's um, Mushu. Aha, I forgot one, Z. Um, there we go. Now he's, now he's better. Okay. Um, you know, like I said, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could ink every single little um, nail and things like that. So, but I, I can't today, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, you erase. So hopefully that's dry enough. And you would go over and you would erase all these lines. Get the lines out of there. You can't see anything. And what you're left with is a drawing. Sorry about the eraser sheds I'm putting everywhere here in the studio. Um, you're left with a complete drawing, right? And then always sign your work. There we go. I hope you've had a good time today. I hope you've enjoyed the workshop. Um, always remember, though, that if you want to send stuff in, we'd love to have it, okay? Uh, mountain moors are, are everywhere, and they're a fascinating thing, a part of our culture. Um, why don't you research and find one of your own and send it in to me? I'd love to draw about it and talk about it, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. And again, thank you, Pike TV and theholler.org for making this show possible. Until next time.